Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, please consider hitting that subscribe button. My name is Tracy Milan. I'm the creator and owner of the Brewmill Candle Company, as well as Mission and McKinney All Natural Bath and Body Shop. I make candles, concrete vessels, even soaps, bath bombs, body lotions, and more. But I also make video tutorials for other makers to follow along. I've had a lot of requests from my subscribers asking for a detailed video of how I make my concrete vessels for my candles. So I've put together a step-by-step -step video tutorial of different vessels, lids, soap dishes, and even an ashtray all in one video. So if you'd like to follow along, continue watching to the end to see how I made these vessels in these intro photos and you can create your own just as easy. And if these videos are helpful to you, please subscribe and hit that like button so I know to make more content like this. All right, let's jump right in. So the first thing you want to do is gather all of your supplies, as you can see here. So I start with four cups of cementol, and I will use one cup of water. And so I just put in a little bit of water to start with. I don't use the full cup until I get it all a little bit mixed up. I use the reverse osmosis out of our filter system here in our house. Our tap water is a little bit hard where I live, and it creates a little bit of a darker vessel. So I'm going to try to make a little bit of a lighter finish on this one. And here I'm just using the modern Craft Lab tulip molds. And as I pour my concrete into the mold, I shake it and I tap it and I tap it all down and get rid of all of the bubbles. And now we're going to make some soap dishes with what I have left over. As you can see, it's hardened up a little bit. It's been a couple of minutes since I poured it. And this is the perfect consistency to just drop right down into the soap dish molds. And I just drop in a little bit at a time into each one, tapping it to make sure that all of the mixture gets in, taking out whatever I think might be a little bit extra. And I will just give those a few taps to make sure that I'm not leaving any air bubbles in there and then I give them a little tap underneath my table these aluminum tables are great for banging around at the bottom to get all of the bubbles out I kind of clean up the edges just a little bit and then we're gonna move them aside and we're gonna make some lids now so I use the modern craft lab modern craft lab lids that um, all of the rest of you are probably also using. And I find that um, they do leave a little bit of voids in underneath the lip area. So I add a little bit more water to my mixture, just make it a little bit runnier so that it can get in into uh, underneath the lip. And I only pour half of each one first. These silicone bowls are just wonderful. Look how easy it is to just grab that bowl and just pour it. So I just put in half first. And then I tap down the concrete mixture so that it pushes it all the way under the lip. Um, I find by doing this method, I can keep a lot of the air gaps from occurring. All of the problems that you all know, we, we all have these problems with these lids. So I run the knife a little bit underneath the lid, move it around just to make sure I'm not leaving any bubbles in there. And um, that's the first half of the pour. And then I top it up until I get pretty level with the top and scrape out whatever I can out of this bowl. I wanna to try to use up the last of this mixture into these lids. And then, as you can see, I give them a little bit of a tap and then that gets the, uh, the air bubbles to rise up to the top. Top it off just a little bit, make sure everything's in there just right. And I go underneath the table. Once again, these ta this, this table is wonderful. I can bounce. I don't have a vibrating table, but I can make a vibrating table. Just catch everything from falling off the edge, which is what I do. It's actually kind of fun part of my day. And I give it a little bit of a spray with 99% alcohol to just break up those little surface bubbles that are left. I try to clean off as much as I can off of my mold. I know that those will all just snap off later. But unless you're wearing safety goggles, uh, when that dries and you go to demold these lids, that uh, those dried little pieces on the edge, they will snap up at, at your eyes. So you definitely want to try to clean up your mess as possible, as much as possible. And so there I am just cleaning off all of the molds, giving it a little few more taps to make sure all of the bubbles are gone. And then I just move those aside. 
And now we're gonna use the oval molds. These are from Amazon. The link is uh, described below. And I love these oval molds. These ones sell actually the most for me. They, my customers absolutely, absolutely love these ones. And so I mix up all of the concrete or the cement all with the water and I get it to the consistency that I want. And this one here, I'm putting in half a cup of titanium dioxide, and that's going to make the concrete a much lighter. I'm not going to achieve white, but I'm going to get pretty close with this mixture. The titanium dioxide is a natural mineral, as you know, and it doesn't do any harm to the finish of the, of the product at the end. It keeps it nice and hard. It doesn't do anything to the um, structure of it. And so I just mix that right in with the cemental and with the RO water and I pour it right into the oval molds. And I don't have enough for all three, but that's okay. I just keep adding, this is all fine, nothing in there. As long as you keep adding more mixture to the bowl, I don't find that anything dries out, nothing cures faster or anything like that. I can get five molds out of this one pretty quick so I just quickly add a little bit more cemental and then I will add some of that water I keep that little side bowl with water in it and any tools that I'm using like that knife for example that cemental will harden up pretty fast on my tools if I just leave it on the side there ignoring it because I don't need it at that moment so I keep everything inside the water I will reuse that water it's the same amount of water that I brought down so I keep my knife in it and, um, and that way nothing hardens on the knife. So there I am banging out any air bubbles that might be rising or developing inside those oval molds. I wanna get them to rise to the top. And uh, just bang and bang and bang, tapping everything down. You wanna make sure you tap it a lot. Get your mixture down to the consistency that you want, which is a nice loose pancake um, consistency. And top that one up. And I did add titanium dioxide to that one, to that second mixture as well. I, I didn't show it on the video, but I did add it in the same way that I showed it at the beginning there. I put a knife down that third one. Reason being is because I put in the two different uh, mixtures. I wanted to make sure that they blended well together without showing any demarcation between the two. So once again, banging down the oval mold as much as you can. Um, there's a lot of tapping involved in this. You want to get all those bubbles to rise to the top. And with that aluminum table, it actually works really well because while I'm tapping one, it's actually vibrating all the rest of the vessels. As you can see, those little bubbles are rising to the surface. And so I'm just going to use up the last of my product and top off those oval molds. Anytime you add any extra mixture to the top, bang it down so that it doesn't leave anything in there. And just tap, tap, tap. And so there I am giving it a 99% alcohol spray again, just to get the surface bubbles to pop. I don't really want to put my finger in there. And uh, anyway, so we're tapping that down and now these should be ready to be set aside so we can make some more. So now we're gonna do a little bit of a black and white mix and um, we're gonna try to go for our marbled look. And so, I have the mixture set on the other, the big bowl, and then I take a little small bowl. I go to the sink and I just grab some tap water because actually it doesn't matter. I'm acting, adding um, black oxide pigment to it anyway. And so I use up the last of the titanium dioxide and mix that one up in there. That one's going to be the lighter, um, possibly whiter portion of the vessel. And I'm basically gonna do um, and in the pot swirl. I mean, if any of you make soaps, this is how we do it. We just mix up one little small amount and then you just drop it right in. So I don't really have a measured amount. I just dump a little bit of this glob marble um, oxide, pigment oxide into this mixture. And I just wait until I get the consistency that I'm hoping for as well as the color. So I want it to be nice and runny so it'll drop down into that other mixture pretty good. And I also want it to be nice and black. This mold here is pretty cool. I got it off of Amazon. It makes a nice big square um, mold uh, vessel. I drop the oxide right in, the black mixture right into there and I just pour it. I don't mix it, I don't do anything. Just dump it right inside and let it do its thing and it'll come out however it comes out. 
which um, I can tell by now that this is going to be very messy. This uh, glob marble, because I do it very loosely in the, in the second part of it, it does make it a little splashy. But that's okay, I'm using a stainless steel table and I have my gloves on and I have a cloth and I can wipe everything off. Just know that it is messy and I absolutely recommend you wear gloves. These Amazon molds here, they make a really nice vessel at the end, but I really don't like them. They're very difficult. They're super, super narrow to try to get that uh, mixture down inside. And it tends to just blob over the sides and I've really not been able to do anything to do that. If, if any of you have used these molds before and you have suggestions about how to pour down into that without making such a mess, I would appreciate it. Go ahead and put the comments down below because I have not been able to use these molds without making a mess. But I do like the finished product. They, they turn out quite nice. And then here with everything that I have left over, I always make an ashtray. I keep the little ashtray mold off to the side. I don't like to waste any of my product. And um, everybody likes a good solid concrete ashtray that they can keep out in their backyard that won't blow away. So it never seems to be a waste and they manage, I manage to sell them at the market all the time. So I just drop in whatever I have left over in my bowl, just scrape everything out and put it inside this mold. And we'll see how it turns out. I, I think I can tell here that um, I've definitely used a little bit more black. I'm probably not going to get what I was trying to achieve, but um, at the end, it's just going to be what it's going to be. So I'm just gonna try to clean up my mess a little bit here. Definitely want to bang that down so that all of the air rises to the top and I just put a little pencil through there, a little line through there, clean up that mess at the bottom. Smack it down so that it flattens out a little good. And, um, and then that's it. Looks like it's time to clean up all of these tools and as you can see it is very messy. So yes, wear gloves, wear everything. So I bring over a stainless steel bowl after I've used this glob marble um, oxide pigment. It will stain anything else that I put it in. So a stainless steel bowl is what I do. And as you can see, I took my gloves off. The best way to clean it up, those gloves were messy anyway, and I can wash my hands. This doesn't stain my hands. I, it comes off my hands just fine. So I put it in the stainless steel bowl and wash everything first before I put it in my sink for obvious reasons. We'll get into a little bit later. So I just scrub out these silicone bowls. They're wonderful. I used to wait for them to dry and just smack them around and take them out, but they never came out as clean as I liked. So here I'm just cleaning up this mess and I got some on the floor, but I clean it up right away. And you see how clean those bowls came. They're just wonderful, ready to be used again for the next one. So here's all of our vessels that have been poured and they are going to sit and dry for about three hours before I can demold them. And the lids as well, and the soap dishes that I made. So we'll be back in, um, in three hours and we'll see if, uh, how they look when we demold them. There's those bowls, how nice and clean they came out. And yeah, so these are looking good. So we'll come back and demold them. So now it's three hours later and we're going to take them all out of their mold, see how they look. And just as I suspected, the black marble ones didn't really quite come out marbled. They just came out black, but that's okay. I like them like this. You can see my hands are covered in this, but it's okay, I'll wash them all later. And this mold from Amazon I was telling you I don't really like, it really is not as easy to demold as you're gonna see later when I do the Modern Craft Lab ones. But if you pull it up and then give it a good roll and you push it against your body and you push it again, <laughs> it does eventually come out. Yeah, there I am struggling with it a little bit. But you give a little spin and it comes out. And that didn't turn out so bad. It's, a, it's more black than I wanted, but I actually quite like it. It's nice. So as you can see, I got some dust on my other ones, but it's not a big deal. It doesn't stay. None of it ever does clean up my mess there. This one is a really interesting mold. It's got these little tighteners on the side. Take that off, pull off that hard piece, and then I can pull this back. And these are really, really easy to demold. I like this mold a lot. So as you can see, you wanna, sh before you take all of your molds off, be very careful because it can get sharp. 
So before I really get into a really big struggle, I just take my sandpaper and kind of sand off a little bit of the sharp edges before I go any further. I've definitely had a few injuries from <clears throat> demolding. And so you can see I've gone ahead and washed the black off of my hands before I touch all the rest of these vessels. So there are the soap dishes. They turned out actually quite nice. It's the first time I've used these soap dish molds, so I actually like these. I think I might order some more and make a whole bunch more of those. I have a feeling that they're going to sell quite well. The Modern Craft Lab uh, tulip molds are wonderful. I love them. These are my favorites. As you can see, I'm breaking off all of those little extra pieces that might be there. As soon as I start demolding, it's going to snap and fly back at my eye. But look how easy those are to demold. They got the nice um, thing on the outside that keeps them from flopping when you fill them up. And everything just comes apart fine. These are the ones from Amazon, the oval ones. And they have a nice hard outer shell. You want to get rid of that first. And then you can see you can just pull that rubber back, the silicone back. These demold super easy. I love these older ones. I've used them hundreds of times. I, I can't even tell you how many times I'm at it. They were, I think, $19 or $29. It was a good investment, actually. They make great molds. And actually, these ones right here are my best sellers. Everybody loves the oval molds. So you can see they're super easy to demold. And there's the lids. And you can see there's no voids in there anywhere. And you use that method where you push it down with the knife and then push it into its edge and those are fine. So then I sand off all the sharp edges. I just go over to the garbage can and as you can see, I'm doing it one at a time as fast as I can. <laughs> and I sharp, I uh, sand off all of those sharp edges. And then they are all ready to go into um, a bath. But before I put them in a water bath, I wash every single one of my molds first with warm soap uh, bubbly water and that is how I keep my molds in good condition. You know, we all know we spend a lot of money on these molds. And the last thing you want to do is let the chemical compounds that are inside of the cementol to be eating away at your molds overnight or for a week or anything like that. So the number one thing I do is I just wash every single one of my molds, warm bubbly water and I um, I keep a little mixing container inside the sink. I do not wash directly in my sink. I don't let any concrete, any of the cement all go down my drain at all. So after I dump a little bit of the water out, I do use this strainer and I catch everything that's sitting at the bottom. It's heavy, so it just it flows to the, or sinks to the bottom. And as you can see, I am getting every last crumb out of the bottom of there. And that right there. You don't want any of that to end up down your into your plumbing. So into the garbage it goes. And that's it. So now we will do a water bath. And I do believe in water bathing. This is a controversial subject, whether it needs to be done or doesn't need to be done. I'm not going to get into a debate as to whether it needs to be done. You can do it your way. I'll do it my way. Um, you can do it this way if you like. I believe that there's a reason for it. The reason that I believe it needs to be water bathed is because cementol and all of the chemical compounds included in this cementol, if you read up the MSDS sheets, you'll see what all the ingredients are. They, it, they need to stay wet while they're curing and they obviously will not reach um, optimum strength until about 28 days, but seven days is a, is a good um, amount of time for me to believe that it's a good solid concrete. So I only water bathe for 24 hours. The first 24 hours, it heats up in the first couple of hours. And then from there, it, it just needs to sit in water for, for 24 hours. After that, I let it cure for that full seven days that I'm talking about. And then, and then I'll seal them. I won't seal them before the seven days because I think that they probably still have some water in them and there's no point in adding a sealant to it while there's still some water in there that needs to be evaporated. So the 24-hour water bath for me helps strengthen it in my belief, and um, others do it without it. It's just our process, and it's nothing. I just throw it in there, and I forget about it. I come back the next day, and I take them out of their water bath. And they stay nice and strong. This way I don't believe that anything to do with the heat of my candle is ever going to dry up um, in somebody's home and cause any problems. So obviously when you're working with cement, you get really dry hands. So we make a luscious cream 
It's available on our website, and um, here I am just loading my hands up with it because my hands take a beating when I'm making cement vessels. So keep your hands nice and clean, protect your hands. Now here we are 24 hours later and I'm going to take them out of their water bath. When you take them out of the water bath, you'll notice right away that they have a slimy coating to them. And that's just the chemicals in the water reacting to each other and leaving this, this uh, mixture on the outer edge. If you don't wash it, you're gonna leave a flaky, dry, um, kind of sandy, dusty look to your, your concrete vessel. So get that slime off. It only takes a minute. Wipe everything down. Get right down inside where the wick is going to stick. And I find that um, wicks don't stick to this, um, this consistency of this sort of dried, sandy uh, leftover that this slime leaves. So I give it a good wash. I wash everything down really good. It's just water and a cloth. Just wipe everything down. And then uh, clean out your bucket so that you can use it again. And the same thing with all of the vessels. So the dark ones, as you can see, I rinsed them a little bit before I put them in. That's only because I just didn't want all of the black to sit inside the water. It does leave a little bit of a coating before the water bath but after the water bath there's nothing left i can rub my hands on it and there's no black left over and so there are the tulip molds and i'm just washing them all out cleaning everything it only takes a couple of minutes to wipe everything down and then after everything is wiped down nice and clean and i feel like there's no slimy texture to the vessel anymore i just move them over to my table and let them air dry um, for the next seven days. I don't spray them. I don't come back. I don't do anything with them. They've already done what they need to do sitting in the water bath for 24 hours and I feel like they, um, they're they fine and they don't need to do anything else. So here you can see I also water bathe my lids. I water bathe everything. The soap dishes, the lids, everything. I don't want anything to dry out in anyone's environment. We live in a dry environment here in Alberta and um, I don't want that to sit on someone's countertop and a week or a month later it starts to dry and crack on them so I water bathe them even if they're not exposed to heat I still think that they can get dry and um, so here I am just wiping down everything taking off I find also that it's a lot easier to seal these after I've washed them like this I have in the past not washed all the slime texture off of it and the sealant doesn't seem to stick very well so here they are, we're just going to let them dry for seven days and, um, and that should be the end of that. And after the seven days, we're going to do a sealing. So I will come back and show you that video. And thank you for watching. I hope we covered everything. And if you have any questions, please do so in the bottom in the comments and uh, hit the subscribe button if you would like to see more content like this. All right. Thank you. Bye bye.